What is going on everybody? Welcome to another Go language programming tutorial video. In this video what we're going to be talking about is concurrency or at least we're going to start talking about concurrency in the Go programming language. Now first what we should talk about is what exactly is concurrency because this can be kind of confusing. So concurrency is not in parallel. The way you can think about it is concurrency is like dealing with multiple things at any one time whereas parallel parallelism is doing multiple things at any one time. So for example, concurrency is like, consider you're like a CEO of a company, you're writing a company wide memo, but as emails come in, you're responding to emails, maybe someone comes to your door and asks a quick question, you, you, you pause the memo and you answer that question and then you get back to the memo, something like that. You're doing those things concurrently. Um, so that way when that person comes to your door, they don't have to like stand there until you're finished with the memo necessarily or, or something like that. So in our case, like with our web app, we're spending a lot of time just sitting there. We're sending out the request. We're waiting for the request to come back. That's a lot of time. It's like 50 to 75 milliseconds. Multiply that by every single sitemap that we're visiting and they just keep adding up. Whereas we actually could be, while we're waiting for one thing to make a response, we actually could send out another request. While we're waiting for that also to make a response, we could send out another request. Chances are, we could probably send out all our requests in 75 milliseconds. So, um, so that's, that's concurrency. So in Go, the way we do concurrency is with Go routines. The way we use a Go routine is you just simply type Go. I have no idea where it is, but anyways, <laughs> type Go in front of the function call. So let's just make a quick example to illustrate this. So I'm just gonna say package main, um, and then we're gonna go ahead and just, we're gonna make a couple imports. We're gonna import time and uh, format, just to print things out. And then let's say we've got a function that says whatever string we pass, and that's all it does. It just says whatever. So in this case, um, and in fact, let's make it a little more complicated. So let's say it iterates like it says the thing like three times. So let's just say for i colon equals zero uh, while i is less than three and then i increment. Let's just format dot print line uh, s. And then also let's go ahead and do a time dot capital S sleep time dot millisecond times 100. So, um, Okay, cool. I mean, this should be totally clear like what's going on in this function. So <laughs> hopefully you understand. Now let's do go ahead and make our main. And then our main function, if we would run, like let's say we're gonna say two things. Let's say we're gonna say, say, hey, and then say there. So let's save that, come up here, and then go run go tut.go. And we see, hey, 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 there, there, there. Everything kind of ran, um, you know, in parallel here, or not parallel, uh, ran linearly rather. Um, so when we got to this, it ran each of the iterations before it got to this line. Now instead, what if we converted one of these things to a Go routine? For example, let's just convert the first one to a Go routine. So we just throw Go, the Go statement, right in front of the function. That's it. So a Go routine in Go is just like a lightweight thread, okay? So it's gonna launch, say, hey, um, in a thread for us. And that's it, that's all you have to do to do it. So let's go ahead and run that really quick. And here we can see it's just, okay, this time it, it actually said there before hey. Um, won't necessarily, I don't think it would necessarily always do that, but anyway, um, it might, maybe it would actually, for a reason I'm gonna explain in a moment. So what if we made both of these go routines? So we said, go say, hey, go say there. So what if we made them both go routines? What do you, what would happen? So let's go ahead and run it real quick. And suddenly we see nothing. What if, um, what if we said, like, let's say we do say, hey, and then go say there. So the first example we did was go say, hey, and then we just said, say there. This time what I want us to do is to do say hey and then do the go say there. So what's gonna happen here is it just says hey, 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 right? And so, and if we made again both of these go routines, whoops, if we made them both go routines, where is here? We get nothing. So what's going on here? Well, 
the go routine is just kind of launched out, but it's gonna it, it, it's running concurrently. There's nothing that that says, hey, this absolutely must finish, right? So if your program finishes before the go routine finishes, okay, it's over. It's it's non blocking, so it's just not gonna do anything. So even though we we ask these things to run, they're just not getting done. That's why when we said go say hey and then say there. Well, this requ was required to finish, so it was definitely going to finish, and that's why this was able to actually run. Um, and then I guess just the launching of making this concurrent took a, a little bit like longer, and then we actually got to this point, and then that's why probably there is coming first. Not positive, that's just my guess. So instead, let's say you said go say hey, go say there. We can kind of illustrate that that's the only issue that we're having by doing a time.sleep time dot let's just do a second save that come up here and we can run this and sure enough everything runs it waits for a second um and in fact it just waits for a second right because these are just go routines so these launched launched it's not actually waiting for these and then it sleeps for a second before the program ends so um anyway um, so those are that's just a really quick basic example of go routines but of course immediately you're probably wondering well I mean that's all fine and dandy and like a simple example where you just kind of add a sleep at the end and that's all you got to do um, but in practice this is not a good idea right like you don't want to handle for your go routines by by thinking to yourself okay how long about should these take and then you know maybe I'll just add a little more time and then that's fine well because you're gonna leave time on the table so surely there's a better way right and there is and so in the next tutorial what we're gonna be talking about is how you can actually synchronize these go routines to wait for them to complete um, and to basically basically wait for them to complete without leaving time on the table using something arbitrary and hacky like time.sleep for some amount of time. So anyways, that's what we're going to be uh, dealing with in the next tutorial. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.